I invite you to look to one side of the room. Now to the other one. Think about it. It is definitely a pleasure to be able to see each other's faces when only a few weeks ago it was unthinkable. Yes, please smile. During the last two years, we have undergone unprecedented challenges in lifestyles, work patterns, and, and strategies at political and uh, economic levels. These challenges have put our resilience under an extraordinary strain. Now, on top of that, as we were just beginning to understand the overall impact of COVID-19 health crisis on the society, we have been hit again by another crisis, a war that is taking place in the heart of Europe. Geneva and Kiev are separated by a flight time of only three hours. This conflict is taking place close to home. New experience for many of us, old story for many others. But what if I tell you that there are other conflicts that are emerging in parallel. Conflicts that are closer to us, with borders much wider than those of Russia and Ukraine, evolving much faster, involving many more people, and with a higher impact at a, at a, greater, at a, a greater impact at a global level. I am speaking about cyber conflicts and uh, cyber violence. For conflict and violence to unleash, Two sides have to be created. We know well how this happens in the physical world. Everybody in this room could visualize now mobs fighting the streets and soldiers fighting a battle. But how is this happening in the digital world? Who is fighting? Well, the answer it is that it could be all of us. The truth it is that with the Alongside with the advances in digitalization and increasing use of digital technologies, we could be all at risk of becoming part of a side, opposing sides, without even knowing it. We could be all uh, fall into this and become part of these uh, isolated groups that uh, think about only their opinions, misharboring. Uh, misconceptions about the other groups. We could be all becoming more and more polarized, radicalized, more open to violence and conflict. The immediate question today for us is what has more destructive power? A bullet or many clicks? Trying to solve this kind of query, queries inspired me to put my background in telecommunications and nanotechnologies to the service of peace tech, a newly created field that aims to use technology to prevent conflict and promote peace. The fact that this, uh, the challenges that we have faced the last two years have turned into a catalyst for the increasing adoption of digital technologies. If we are living in a time of transformation, the dawn of a new era, it has a lot to do with global digitalization. To give you a number, in January 2022, out of the world population of 7.9 billion, 4.62 billion were active social media users. Are you one of them? I am. Digitalization has brought and brings many positive things to our lives. Now more than ever with the devices connected to the internet, computers, tablets, smartphones, we are reinventing not only the way we communicate, but the way we work, teach, learn, entertain, produce, consume. We are actually reinventing the way we are. But why? Why are we so attracted to digitalization? Well, communication, information, going even further, gossip. To quote the Professor Yuval Noah Harari, the vast majority of human communication is still gossip. Well, 
Statistically, the four main uses of the internet are finding information, staying in touch with friends and family, keeping up to date with news, and researching how to do things. You can find almost everything. But if we reflect on our use of the internet, it could look like harmless. We could reach the common presumption that internet has brought information, communication, openness, freedom. Well, let's watch together a video that was posted in the social media over a month ago. In this video, you can see that a news reporter is speaking in front of what looks like corpses from Ukrainian uh, victims, civil, vi civil victims. But as you can see, one of the bodies moves, very much alive. If you put together this with the caption below, you could think, many people could allege that uh, the victims that we see in the news are fake, that they are pretending to be dead, that they are actually actors. But this is a fake. This is propaganda. The video is not from Ukraine, it's from Austria, from a protest against uh, climate change that took place before the war on February 4th. The audio and the caption are, the, are not the original, are real, from an NBC News report uh, from February 24th. Still, it has gone viral, generating over one million views in Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, etc. Even if, if uh, it has been denounced as a fake, as propaganda, and removed once and again from the social media, you can still find it. Find it online. But this is not that bad. This is just another prank in the internet. Well, let's uh, see together some of the reactions to the video. While there are, there are some users who actually denounce it as fake news, many others share it without verifying the source of the information. Others get increasingly aggressive, many, other, many others just joke about it. But can we joke? This is not only happening between Russia and Ukraine. Nowadays, we can be at this situation really often. And this is just one example uh, of how fake news can create these sites in the digital world. But this is not so bad. Things get uh, older uh, in the internet quite, quite uh, easily. Now this is a never-ending story. Daily we are swamped by thousands of fake news. Moreover, every time that we are surfing the internet, looking for information, liking, commenting, sharing posts, we are actually interacting with the algorithm of the digital plat platforms. We are giving information about ourselves and about people like us. Like us. This algorithm gathers metrics such as gender, age, location, last uh, purchases, last actions, past actions of users that are similar to us to build on our preferences and develop our online profiles. They use these online profiles to propose us with the information we would like the most and click on in the future. Have you ever wondered with this why this uh, online shop is proposing you always this article that is so adapted to you, you didn't even Google it yet? The digital algorithms know the online profiles of all of us in this room. To quote the professor Susanna Zubov, we used to think that we were searching Google, but uh, now Google is searching us. This profiling is especially worrying if we are accessing once and again and again fake news, because we, will, we, we fall in what is called the vicious cycle of fake news. We like, comment on, or share misleading contents, lies. The online algorithms interpret that we prefer this kind of contents, still lies. Online algorithms propose us fake news. And this cycle goes once and again and again and again, getting worse and worse. If you are caught up 
into fake news, you will be in the future. But why should we watch out? Why should we stop this vicious cycle due to what I've called the falling ladder of cyber violence? When you stop trying to distinguish between what is real and what is fake, your information source is narrow. You get alienated in online environments where users repeat and reinforce lies. You get polarized, thinking that your opinions are the only opinions. Polarization is a natural precursor of radicalization, which directly leads to violence online and violence offline. If you, we repeatedly share fake news, we can create a domino effect around us, inciting other people to climb down this ladder. In a recent survey, it was discovered that the 73% of women journalists who suffered attacks in person had previously experienced violence online. The danger is real, the physical, the physical danger is more real. Maria Reza, one of the Nobel Peace Prize uh, to, uh, 2021, for her efforts to safeguard freedom of expression, which is a pre precondition for democracy and lasting peace, is suffering this situation. The campaigns against her are escalating from off online pre persecution to offline perse uh, persecution, from fake news, sexist and racist comments online, rape, and death threats online to state-led attacks offline. Using her own words, the easiest part is dealing with the impact of online violence and disinformation on me. I just see the impact on the world, and I don't know why we are not panicking. As I've told you before, I've started to work in this field, peace tech, in order to cure with this kind of issues. However, the current use of frequent use of words such as peace, violence, conflict gives an unrealistic image of their, their true meaning. By using the definitions given by John Halton in 1964, there are three types of violence. Physical violence, structural violence, and cultural violence represented in, on this uh, iceberg. At the tip of the, of the iceberg, the smallest while visible part, you have physical violence, hurting, killing. At the base of the iceberg, you have structural, the largest, the largest and yet invisible part, you have structural violence, marginalization, segregation, and cultural violence, linked to language, religion, ideology, etc. We are more used, more familiar to physical violence because we see it. But structural and cultural violence are much more practiced overall online. Only by promoting the absence of the three of them, we will be able to foster peace. <sighs> However, it can be difficult to stop physical violence, isn't it? But all of, the, all of us can address structural and cultural violence without even leaving home. The good news today it is that all of us can contribute to foster peace. It can be difficult, but uh, starting today, you, you can start applying this kind of recipes. Here you can see the crap test. Check online information in terms of currency, the timeliness of the information, relevance, the importance for you authority, the source of the information, accuracy, the correctness, correctness of the contents and purpose, why this information exists. This is only a practical recipe, there are many others. In the field of peace tech, peace tech we are working hard to offer other solutions soon. If you already knew it, share it. Because starting today, we can choose whether if uh, making uh, positive clicks or negative 
clicks. Starting today, we can start building safer spaces for the generations to come digitally and physically. I'm telling this today. Today, enough positive clicks can prevent a bullet. Thank you very much. <laughs>